tries to deal with the thousands of immigrants streaming across our southern border right now, a top immigration reform advocate is today warning if Congress does not act, the president will. Immigration reform is not dead. It will just move to the White House for action if none comes from this House. Joining me now, Andy McCarthy, former federal prosecutor and author of the new book, Faithless Execution, Building the Political Case for Obama's Impeachment. Andy, so now uh, Democrats like Luis Gutierrez want to see the president act, and we heard that on, on our program just last night, that in the wake of Cantor's defeat and so on, immigration reform may be set back in the House, but that the president is likely to take his pen and his phone and do something. His critics say that's how we got in this position of these children and their parents believing they could cross with impunity. What say you? It is how we got into this situation. He systematically has failed to execute the immigration laws faithfully. Uh, he's purported to be able to give benefits to illegals to come in, which has the effect, obviously, of enticing more illegality. And he's basically made it known that the laws are not going to be enforced, which is uh, a prescription for disaster, and that's disaster is what we now have. You know, have. but when you start with children, right. with these little ones, I mean, I don't, I, you know, I think most Americans look at them and say, oh, good God. I mean, what, what can be done? It's a tragedy that they were sent here by their parents, but net, we're the United States of America. What are we supposed to do? Just kick them out? Well, it, it, as a matter of fact, you have to create a situation where they don't come in the first place, mm -hmm. and now that they're here... The, the mere fact that you're asking the question is, is the sort of thing that uh, Gutierrez and others are banking on. They're basically saying the political system in Washington is not equipped to deal with this in a methodical way. The president has to come in and act decisively. And unfortunately, when he acts decisively, it actually exacerbates the problem. And we'll be back here a month from now with a new batch of kids. You know, the Washington Times had an editorial today talking about how this influx threatens to transform the nation. They say this is a man-made disaster, but they say that this threatens to transform the nation. Do you believe that? I believe the nation's being transformed, and I think that this is a component of it, but I, I'm not even sure that this is the biggest component of it. I, th I really took the president seriously when he said that he wanted to fundamentally transform the United States of America. That's not me saying so. That's what he said he wanted to do. I, I think he's gone about that in a variety of ways. Immigration's a big part of how he did it. But I, I sort of think what we're seeing now is the, the old piven cloward strategy applied to policy. This is the, this idea that you overload the system with crisis, and the system has a limited amount of capacity to deal with one crisis at a time. So we're now at a point where there, you, know, you get the EPA, and then you have the Taliban, and now you have uh, you know, student loans, and then the next day we have an immigration crisis. We can't deal with this. Uh, it, Washington can, is not mm -hmm. equipped to deal with it. Uh, and this sort of opens up the area for the president to come in with executive power and try to resolve everything. And unfortunately, I don't think we're going to like the way he resolves it. You can't think, though, that President Obama, maybe you can, I don't know, that President Obama wanted to see these children sleeping on plastic tarps. In one instance, it's 300 children to four showers right. down there. That this is part of some master plan or is this unintended consequences from a, a more relaxed immigration policy? Megan, when... President Obama has policies that strengthen Islamic supremacists. I don't think it means that he wants terrorist attacks mm -hmm. to happen, but that's what happens. The natural outcome of his policies, the, the logical place that you end, is exactly these kinds of humanitarian catastrophes. And it's always been so with people who want to be judged by their good intentions instead of the debacles that their policies It's cause. interesting you point that out, because we, be, we begin the show with General Jack Keane talking about how the caliphate is basically starting in Iraq now, the Islamic State devoted to jihad. They've basically taken over Iraq, and that's now they've got a centralized government they're, they're about to form it, with the goal of attacking America. We wanted to get out of Iraq. The people wanted to get out of Iraq. The president promised that on the political campaign trail. With immigration, he promised that he would be more, uh, you know, sort of kinder and gentler when it came to right. immigration policies. All things that many on the left and even many in the center said, yes, we're behind you on. Right. And yet tonight we're seeing some really unfortunate results. Right. Well, because you can't run the world on good intentions and you can't run the world on incoherent policies where in, in Syria and Iraq, as you're talking about, in Iraq... The same guy who we're, we're targeting, who's like an al-Qaeda operative, uh, he's the enemy. 
but, but if he crosses into the border of Syria, he becomes a rebel and he's on our side. Mm -hmm. And you know? we arm him. Right. And we arm him. I mean, that's been documented. Andy, good to see you. Good to see you. Well, less than 24 hours ago, Senator...